Year. One way to never change the game for me is Weak Hero. I think I mentioned the stream before, or at least once on this channel. It's wrapping up pretty soon, and you need to get caught up. It's the greatest thing you'll ever read in your entire life. I promise you. So, like about Weak Hero, it's a simple yet ironic plot. Our main character Gray, he doesn't like attention, but he got the attention of the most dangerous person in the entire series, Donald and A. In terms of the way Donald works, he runs his organization Union with the Iron Fist. But Gray is one of the few schools that doesn't submit to Union, so that's the problem. Most schools, they have their strongest people, they work under Union, they hate Donald, they fear him, but they won't challenge him. That's how strong he is. But here's the problem. Even though they could just team up, most people under Union don't like each other enough to unify. So it's ironic because with Gray and his school, Every time they beat up somebody, they can become friends, or they realize all they ever wanted was a good friend. And if they had that, they could do anything together. And that's what I like about, you know, Gray and his faction. We're seeing all these strong guys work together to beat this Goliath of an enemy. And then about Donald is, he hates failures, hates traitors, or anybody who won't work for him or can be useful to him. So the problem was, the reason why a lot of people didn't want to team up or do anything to ruin Union, Union's all about results. If you mess up Donald's plans or you can't complete the assignment, you'll get bullied, you'll get harassed. You'll be the laughing stock of the entire organization. So everyone didn't want to fail. So what people did, they would set up other people to take the downfall. Because it's easier that way. But then about Donald, he's so clever that once he finds out that you try to betray him or set somebody up, you'll pay the price 10 times over. That's why he was ruling so well. But now he realizes he has to pay attention to grade school because they're doing the very thing he doesn't want. They're shaking up the table. They're giving him extra work. So now he's paid attention to Gray and ruin everything at Gray's school. But here's the funny thing. Even when Donald sent his goons to ambush Gray and his friends, they always find out about things and they come together and defeat the enemy. And that's what scares Donald and pisses him off. People are working together, but they're weaker. Does it make sense to him? One character has a past with Donald. It seems like they're gonna have a big old fight and that will determine the swing of this war. And that's what I'm worried about. If it happens that way, crazy. But I can see it playing out a different way where Gray is not to fight Donald or deal with Donald's goons and convince Donald, hey, this fight's not worth it. I understand the ruining union, but we didn't want to be in this war. You brought it to us. Because like I said early, Gray wanted to mind his business, be a good high schooler. But what happened? Every time Gray is trying to relax and enjoy himself, people from Union are trying to fight him left and right. And the more he ignores them, the more they want to fight. So Gray is never in a cycle of the way it works in Union. You always have to drag someone down to hell so you can stay up. You can float. And that's what makes things annoying because everyone in Union knows that's the problem with Union. And they know Union is very volatile. But it's hard to leave because if you're in Union, you get money, you get clout, you have power, you have influence. People are afraid of you. So imagine having all that and then losing it because you messed up one time or you failed one mission. It's crazy, but that's the stakes. We have some characters try to bounce back, but they never bounce back because, like I said, once you mess up in Union, you're the laughing stock. You're the idiot. You're the dummy. You're everyone's kicking back, punching back, whatever you want to call it. And that's what makes things really crazy to me. So I was sitting back like, so how do you actually win in Union? If you're strong enough, that means Donald Price recruited you and he puts you in a situation you owe him a debt that you can never pay back. But let's say, for example, you're like a regular person, you have to be useful to Donald in some way, somehow. Because two characters really like Donald, they're basically like his stats. They tell him, okay, here's the budget, blah, blah, blah. Here you go, Donald, and everything's good. And they watch all this stuff happen like, wow, you guys understand how Donald works. If you mess up, you're next. And another character, he's pretty cool, he's really close to Donald. And essentially, he does like a ranking system. It's called a shuttle ranking, I'm pretty sure. And the way it works, they guess who's more likely to win in fights based on the danger threat of a certain character. So, for example, if a character is always winning their fights and they fight against someone who is strong and barely loses their fights, they try to figure out where the odds of them winning, people can bet on it. And the thing was, because Union had all its influence and only one or two schools opposed Union, it didn't make any sense to fight Union's top brass. You're going to lose, and then they'll just rise up in the rankings. But since Gray and his homies, they defeated some of Union's top dogs, it changed the entire rankings, and it put them on the radar. So now Donald has to take care of them. Even though they thought, okay, we should have a breather, that's not what happened. 
They just make things worse. And Donald right now is preparing for this war with Gray in his school to make sure that no one will ever challenge him because ever since that loss happened for Donald, everyone union is questioning how they should run union or if union needs to be a thing. Should it dissolve? Should it change? Do we need new leaders? What the hell is going on? And that's why it's serious so much. It's like all this build up because once again, if Union ignored Gray in the school, this would never happen. They would continue to rule and they'd have very few people opposing them. But because they're always going after Gray's school in that area, this keeps happening. They lose and have to make up for all their losses and, you know, air out traitors, keep everyone in line, but it doesn't really work. So it's so bad that Donald had to get the strongest people who didn't want to join Union to join Union and work for him. And even though, you know, like I said, a lot of people in Union don't like each other and it's so volatile, even they know if you're in Donald's president, you're not gonna fight someone just because you're stronger. You have to listen to Donald and his orders because his orders are absolute. He's the kingpin around here. But that's why I find funny that I feel like the way it's gonna go down, it's gonna be Donald versus Big Ben. Someone that's really strong in Gray's faction because essentially Big Ben and Donald go way back. And when Big Ben fought, he lost and became scared. But that's the thing. No one thought that they would have to fight, but now they are because ever since Big Ben won in important fights, the whole leaderboard changed, and now their school's a bigger target. So they have to either defeat Donald or serve under Union. And either way, it's not going to be easy because neither side wants to back down. Greatest homies just want to be high schoolers, have fun, and enjoy friendship because, like I said, a lot of characters didn't really have the chance to enjoy friendship because they spent most of the time in school fighting and protecting the people important to them. And now they can finally relax, but they can't because the stakes are rising. Everyone has to train and do whatever they can. But once again, Gray and his homies don't want everyone involved because, yeah, some characters should learn to fight, but we don't want them to get in this dangerous world. Because as you learn with Weak Hero, anyone who gets in the fight, you'll be bait. You'll be the punching bag whenever the person who you want to fight doesn't show up. So the reason why it was so easy before is because they work together. And the weak people, they would take the beatings so everyone else had time to recuperate, gather their strength back, and then finish the fight. But if the weak people start fighting, it will just ramp up everybody's anger, amplify everything, and then they'll lose their temper and probably lose. So I like how things are going right now. Everyone's trying to keep their cool and prepare for the inevitable battle. So I can see it going two ways. Greatness faction, they barely win the fight, and then Union dissolves. And then because of that, Donald has to make a new strategy or make some type of deal with them. Or Gray and his friends will basically lose and have a choice to make. Serve under Union or constantly oppose Union and hopefully convince Union to dissolve slowly but surely. But either way, it's not supposed to be easy. But that's what makes the series so good. Either conclusion, I'll be satisfied with. But I know it's going to be a surprise. I know it's going to be the thing I least expect. But that's what I like about it so much. And every time a new episode drops, I'm like, ooh, how are we going to do things? Who's going to switch alliances? Who's going to make their move? And that's what makes the series so cool. Everybody's plotting something on the low. And every time they get caught, it's going to change the entire dynamic because a plot builds upon each other. When one person switches sides, that changes everything. When one person loses, it changes everything. When one person wins, it changes everything. But no matter what happens, there's never a dull moment. You can be happy for a second, but then you always know the back of your head, the character's worrying about, damn. So we defeated that guy, but then those guys come after us for the revenge, or we have to watch our back like an ambush again. How are we gonna prepare against those guys? They're really strong. Those guys take some hits. It was never like, oh, we're just gonna have a nice, calm day, no worries, everything gonna be smooth. No, something's always boiling in the background. And that's what I like about the series so much, it's like real life. Something's always happening, whether you know it or not. So if you wanna know why you should read it, it's very simple. Imagine a series where you can never just be happy. You're always as you see wondering when are things gonna hit a boiling point? What's gonna happen after the boiling point? How is this gonna tie into the next step, the next move? So yeah, I love it. And you should definitely read it. Because once again, I've never seen a story where I'm always thinking about while reading it, best case scenario, worst case scenario, the unlikely scenario, what needs to happen, what's at stake. It's truly a wild ride. So if you wanna know where you can read it, webtoons. Either the app or the website, and you're good to go. So you want to know what other webtoons are reading, or you want to know what webtoons I recommend as well, have a playlist for it, and I can tell you others in the comment section below or make another video. Let me know your thoughts below. If you enjoyed this, you know what to do. Like it, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. 
I could say so much more, but Nectar needs me.